in Climate Watch for the first time in more than 240 days. There's no bushfires in New South Wales. The Australian state announced the news earlier this week in a tweet from the Rural Fire Service. Authorities contained the flames in mid-February, calling the bushfire season, quote, traumatic, exhausting and anxious. Earlier today, a group of researchers released forensic analysis of devastation. They say climate change made this unprecedented fire season at least 30 percent more likely. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Baradelli joins me now to explain what scientists found. I mean, Jeff, we saw the images. I mean, the koalas, the, the animals, yeah. the people. I mean, these fires were devastating, but, but take us back. Just how bad were they really? Well, I mean, this was life changing for a lot of people, especially in Southeast Australia, where the situation was that bad. I mean, if you think about it, you really have to reevaluate. Is where you live a good place to live? Do you need to move? Do you need to change your livelihood? Uh, and not to mention the psychological uh, ramifications wow. it has on people. So 46 million acres burned, killed at least 1 billion. Some estimates have it over 1.5 billion animals. Wow. And it cost tens of billion dollars. I saw one estimate this morning that says it could be over 100 Gosh. billion dollars. So it's a huge hit to the economy, but it's even more of a, of a tremendous hit psychologically on the people who mm. live there to know that this is not the last time they'll have to deal with this. This is going to become more common uh, in the future. Can you sort of detail what these scientists were able to discover? Right, so this is called Worldwide Weather Attribution. It's a collaboration of climate scientists from all over the world. In this case, it was 17 climate scientists that got together that decided they needed to figure out what the human fingerprint is mm. on these fires. How are burning of fossil fuels and releasing of greenhouse gases affected these fires? And what they found is, and we have a quote from the lead scientist mm -hmm. on this, who says it was extremely unlikely that this could have happened without human-caused climate change. Wow. Okay, so that is one of the conclusions of the study. You can see the quote on the screen right there. Now, in order to do a study like this, they have to break it into two parts. They look at observations, mm -hmm. so the trend in observations, the temperatures, let's say at Central Park that you see, or mm -hmm. anywhere across the country. So they look at Australia's temperatures, mm -hmm. humidity, wind, uh, and then they also look at the computer models and do an analysis on that in order to make it a comprehensive. This is what they found. So the observational analysis revealed that the heat wave that we had this year uh, in Australia was 10 times more likely now than it would have been wow. in 1900. Wow. And the fire weather index was four times higher now than it would have been in 1900. And that's because when you have that much heat, it dries out the vegetation, mm -hmm. dries out the soil, and it makes these fires that much worse. But that was just part one. Mm -hmm. Part two of the study is, let's look at our computer models and figure out what the computer models say. Well, mm -hmm. the computer models said, and there were 11 state-of-the-art climate models used, that the fire weather index this year was at minimum 30% more likely than it was in 1900. So that's a pretty decent amount, but the model average was much higher than the lower bound. 80% more likely that we would have had fire weather this year than it was back in 1900 because of greenhouse warming. Mm -hmm. And if we see the temperatures increase by one more degree Celsius, we've already increased a degree since pre-industrial, a little wow. bit more than that. If we see one more degree Celsius of warming, extreme fire weather like this season in Australia mm -hmm. will be four times more likely in the future. And we could see another degree of warming by 2050, so it's only three decades wow. away that it would be four times more likely uh, to see this kind of fire activity. So when you look at these numbers, it says it was at least a 30% increase mm -hmm. um, for, for the, these wildfires because of climate change. It doesn't sound like a lot. Here's what some of the researchers had to say. I want to play for you what, what they said. Even if um, at least 30% increase might sound a small number, given that we are already in some parts of the world and for some extreme events at really the limits of what we are adapted to. Even these small changes really are very serious and in particular for, for vulnerable communities and vulnerable people, it is a real game changer. What, why do you think it is? Well, so first of all, I should say the computer models are, are not well equipped at this point to reproduce extreme localized heat mm -hmm. and, and fire conditions. And so that's why these scientists are all saying, we estimate that it's a lot higher than 30%, but scientists are always very conservative in their estimates because they want to be as exact as they possibly can be. But they are all saying that it's likely much higher than that. So think about this. Australia is a fairly rich country and it had a really hard time dealing with these fires. Yeah. In fact, they just have a volunteer 
fire squad. They, they don't even pay their, their firefighters. We had to send firefighters from the United States to help them. Now picture a disaster like that. It doesn't have to be fire, but it could be heat. It could be floods, whatever it is, in a country that is a lot less developed. Uh, those countries, it would be impossible to deal with the impacts of a, of a situation just mm. like that. We've seen a lot of big floods in Africa uh, over the past couple yeah. of years. South Africa and also northeastern Africa, related, mm -hmm. by the way, to one of the natural reasons why the Australian fires were bad. Mm. And, 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 and we don't talk about it much in the media here yeah. because we have so many other things that we're talking about. But it has been absolutely catastrophic to the people who live there. And this will only get worse in the future. So that's the context we're mm -hmm. adding. It's just a slight increase mm -hmm. that we make in the, uh, the probability of fire it makes a huge uh, impact on people's lives around the world. Yeah, I, I think it was just those animals, you know, you one over a billion animals. It just says so much. That's the storyline that, that people talk about a lot. Yeah, yeah. 1.5 billion animals and a lot of them going extinct. A lot of animals yeah. going extinct. Exactly right. Yeah. Jeff Baradaliwan, thank you very much for joining oh. us, Jeff.